citizens. Um, today, we will make some new announcements in terms of the white area being expanded into the green area. So changing that from uh, do not use your water to a do not or you can boil your water situation to a total green area. So you see the change in the map. Obviously, there's still an area in Paul Ann that is still red or orange or pink, whichever you're seeing on your TV or your screen. But the good news is, if there's good news, is that we are opening up a much larger area that was white, where they were only able to wash their clothes, take a shower, use a dishwasher, but not drink the water. That area that was white has opened up into green. And then we will continue to give you some additional information, which Allison Struby, our water director, will give you. Um, once again, we want to say to residents, we know this has been painful. We know this has been a very difficult situation for everyone. We know that patients with the system and with the bureaucracy attached to TCEQ and um, government that uh, we've not been able to move as quickly and as fastly and as efficiently as you would like us to or as we would like to. I would like to say a special thanks to Drew Darby who spent many hours with us last night helping us work through the process and helping us reach uh, higher levels of authority to make sure we understood better what was going on and what the potential timelines were going to be. So a special thanks to him for his involvement and his guidance and direction because it made a big difference for us and we felt like we had someone in Austin fighting for the citizens of San Angelo. So thank you, Drew. All right, so Allison's going to come on, talk through uh, more specifics with you, give you the information you need. We certainly will um, open up for questions after Shane Kelton also makes some announcements. But thank you for being the great citizens that you are and being as strong as you are as West Texans. And um, you might not call it patience, but thank you for your patience in working through this situation with us. Allison. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to kind of repeat some of the items that she just discussed, but ultimately on the map that you'll see, uh, we have eliminated the white area. Um, the entire white area has now gone to a green status, which as we have been discussing is a no restriction um, zone. So you can resume water as normal. Um, we were waiting on test results from TCEQ. These confirm, or the area in green has confirmed that no uh, samples in the green area have ever reached um, contaminant levels uh, or had any of the um, compounds that we have seen in the Paul Ann area. They have all come back clean. Um, we want to give an update to what we're doing in the Paul Ann area or in the red zone so that citizens are aware that um, we are we're making steps to get this area flushed out and what I mean by that is we are having to move water through the Paul Ann area so that we make sure we bring complete fresh water through. Uh, we have started flushing here at the base where water is fed into this line and remember that uh, we have discussed in previous pre press conferences that the water being fed into the Paulian area is isolated from recirculating into other parts of the system. We have further isolated the industrial area wedge up here on North Bell Street and 37th Street to make sure that it too is not circulating water even into the Paulian area. So we have uh, made those separations there and so we are currently flushing and have been flushing um, since late Wednesday night starting here and we have to flush all the way up to the new jail facility and then flush from the industrial park out to the wastewater treatment plant. Um, this is a flushing plan that involves flushing 94 hydrants. Um, due to the weather conditions and those type of things, we do anticipate that the flushing will um, complete um, approximately 7.30 or 8 uh, a.m. tomorrow. But once again, that is highly dependent upon the weather. Once we complete the flushing, it is our intention to start sampling tomorrow morning. We have a sampling plan that's been approved by TCEQ. We'll be pulling samples all throughout the area. 
Um, and so we want to get those to Austin as soon as possible. But once again, um, the weather is not in our favor at this time. Uh, we are going to make every effort, whether it's flying, whether it's driving, to get those samples to Austin. Um, but we just want our citizens to know that we are going to try to get them there. But all of these results and getting these samples taken and to Austin will all depend upon the weather. Um, and then once we receive results um, from that sampling, um, we will make our next uh, decisions past that with TCEQ. Um, the other thing, uh, we are working with, uh, we are trying to get a mobile shower unit out to the Paul Land area. Once again, they're working very hard to get that um, to the Paul Land area for those residents out there. Um, and just weather permitting, it, it may be tomorrow. And I'll have Shane Kelton come up here and discuss the distribution of bottled water. Thank you, Allison. As we're as we're um, opening up the the remainder of the wide area um, into a uh, uh, free use or or um, uh, complete use area, uh, the need for for drinking water in that area has been has uh, gone away at this point. So we will be closing the three stations, uh, water water distribution stations that we currently have: the one at Central High School, the one at Bradford Elementary, and the one at the Coliseum. We will be. Uh, we want the citizens of Pauline area to know um, that we will be. Um, uh, city employees will be going door to door uh, this evening, delivering uh, to your residents. One because of the inclement weather that's coming in, and we're expecting, and we're going to try to distribute enough water uh, based on uh, your household needs uh, per person per household need uh, to to make sure that you have enough water to. Uh, sustain your drinking uh, and, and maybe some other small minor needs through the weekend uh, to get you through the inclement weather that we're expecting for Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So we're, you, you should be expecting to see crews, city crews coming down each street, knocking on your doors, visiting with you, uh, and distributing water to your, to your individual homes. Uh, with, if, if there's uh, something comes up, um, uh, that, um, that we cannot make every home this evening. Uh, we will be back out again uh, starting at 9 or 10 in the morning depending upon weather, depending on road conditions. Uh, we, will, we will finish up with, uh, with going from door to door tomorrow to ensure that everybody has the water that they need. Um, with that, um, any, um, we want to make sure that uh, citizens, you know, uh, with this inclement weather coming in, that we want to make sure the citizens try to stay off the as possible. So, um, again, we'll make every effort to get to your house tonight. Uh, and again, if that cannot happen, we will be there in the morning. Shane? Shane, can you just address if there will be any reason for any other announcements made tonight regarding water use? Obviously, we're opening up the wide area for full to green for full use of water, normal water use. But do you anticipate any further announcements that would be made tonight for residents? To, an to answer that question, we we are still we have we have other test results sitting uh, at the LCRLA LCRA labs in Austin. Uh, currently uh, waiting on those results. Uh, we will continue to work through the evening uh, in, into the night to, to look at those results, see those results, and if we have positive test results, uh, we will be visiting with the TCEQ uh, as we move forward looking to see if there's any possible way to uh, minimize any of the restrictions that we have left in that red zone. Uh, again, we're, we, we're not sure on, on any of the timing or the possibility of, of those conversations with TCEQ, but we will, uh, again, if something, if something uh, comes about that we are able to lift restrictions, we will, we will get that information out to everybody as soon as we can. Uh, we, we want to, we as much as the citizens themselves, the employees ourselves, we, uh, we, want to, we want to resolve this as fast as can. We want to ease the restrictions. Uh, as quickly as possible and so if there is any information we will, we will be in contact 
uh, again with the media and putting things out on social media to try to to try to work to 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 help alleviate this. So just to be specific, if there's any change that uh, we get due to results coming back tonight, the media will be alerted of that information. It will be on our social media. We will make sure the KLSD, KSAN, Fox News, ABC is fully aware of any announcements. Chances are there won't be any new announcements tonight, but we just want to make sure you know we probably won't do a press conference like this tonight. The information will come through the media, through our website. It will be updated for your information. Question. Uh, question for Ms. Allison. Have you all been able to pinpoint where this all started? Obviously the Pollyann area is still red. Is that kind of where you're looking right now? Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I also did want to talk about the ongoing investigation. Um, so while we're doing the sampling, the flushing, and all of those things, we are also still working um, on pinpointing the location of the possible contaminant. Um, it has not been located at this point. Um, we do have our um, city, um, city of McAllen uh, folks still here that are helping us through that, and we can't thank them enough uh, for being here, supporting us, um, and working through this issue with us. Um, but right now, we are still investigating it and have not determined the source. And the community has reached out to us and said they have sent complaints as early as February 5th, and they just want to know what took so long to kind of address this issue. So in the frequently asked questions that were submitted or uh, published last night uh, that was discussed, we received one phone call late last week um, of an odor complaint. Our lab technicians did respond uh, to that homeowner. Uh, they took a sample, uh, smelled the water at that time, and they found no odor there, uh, and neither did the resident while on site. Uh, that sample bottle, the water sample bottle, was taken back to our lab, and uh, Others were, you know, conducting an odor test on that and they didn't find anything. But that one phone call, um, it's not uncommon for us to receive um, an odor complaint. Uh, we are a surface water source, so we do have water that has um, more of a smell to it than, um, say, groundwater. But um, it, just the one complaint did not trigger um, what Monday's complaint log did. Um, so when we received the multiple and basically the flood of phone calls on Monday, that is what started this. And when you start flushing, you know, the red area, are you all, when was the last time you flushed it and when are you going to change the process moving forward to avoid something like this? We have been flushing 24 hours a day since late Wednesday night. So we have had crews on a rotating shift. Um, so when I say we started flushing Wednesday night, we haven't stopped flushing since then. Um, so through, we are going to continue flushing 24 hours a day through various shifts until we get all 94 hydrants flushed. Thank you. Thank you. Jalen Lewis with Case and KLST. I had a question for. Um, you Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm terrible with names. Um, Yes, I, I heard, I saw, I'm oh, sorry, I heard it's that you brought up uh, uh, surface water. Has this caused any problems with our surface water in the area? No, this is not a surface water source, uh, and we want to make that very clear. This wasn't a contaminant that left our water treatment plant and went out to the distribution system. The water treated at the water treatment plant has been clear of all these constituents. This was a uh, backflow event uh, where water from a customer's side of the meter infiltrated into our distribution system in a specific area of town. So this is not a surface water or water treatment plant issue. Perfect. And last question. Uh, I know that you are flushing the water is a uh, typical class back in geology and by any chance is everything that's being backflowed, is it going back into our water system or is it perfectly dispersing back into, you know, 
it is not going back to our surface water or anything like that. So you're talking about the flushing that we are doing? Yes, sir. So the flushing that we're doing goes on city streets through the curb and gutter system. Um, and a lot of this area does have some pasture land where that water is being sent out to. Perfect. That's my last question. Thank you. Thank you. We do have all those hydrants where we are flushing and as she said it's going out to our curb and gutters. With the cold weather that we have, be very careful of slick streets because there's going to be more water from this flushing than would typically be on the streets. And we also want to say to the Paul Ann um, citizens that we are trying to think through every possible thing that we need to do to make sure that you feel like you have what you need. We did not set up a distribution center area in the, in the Paul Ann area because we didn't have a large enough area to do that. We needed to have traffic control, a big enough space so that we could do an in distribution and out traffic flow and we didn't have an area large enough. It wasn't because we thought you know, we wanted to make it inconvenient for you. What we were trying to do is make the system as easy and uh, the process, a simple process, so that uh, people were not frustrated waiting in line too long. So it was not to ignore Paul Ann, but it was to make it a simpler, easier process for everyone who needed the water. And you have a question for Shane or Allison? Awesome. Allison. Um, just to reiterate, the three chemicals which was benzene, acetone, nephilim, were they still the main components that were found in the water? Those three components were found in that first round of uh, samples that were collected on Monday. Um, since that time, uh, the samples that we have received back, to, received back have only shown the benzene. And at this moment, can you share what the inspectors from McAllen have found so far? Uh, they've just been going to those commercial facilities um, and we will be debriefing with them later this evening. And would you say the commercial facilities are, do they, are they responsible for what's happening right now or that's something you're going to discuss at a later time? I think that will be discussed at a later time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we also want to mention to the folks in the Paul Ann area, it has been uh, brought up that with this inclement weather, uh, the need to drip faucets and those type of things. So we do want to say that dripping faucets um, is safe to do so so that you don't have uh, pipeline freezing and those type of things in your home. 